In 1987, uh, I was given the opportunity to uh, serve a five-year term as Dean of Medical Education at the uh, Duke University School of Medicine. The whole process of medical education was much more traumatic for students than it, than it really needed to be, to, to be. When I talked to Dr. Kame about the possibility of coming uh, to Duke NUS, um, there were several things that attracted me to this possibility. I told Dr. Kame about the advisory dean system. He immediately saw that a comparable system uh, would be very useful for the students at Duke NUS, and, and as, as you know, this then evolved into the, into the college system. Um, so, so I've been able to play a supportive role in the creation and to some degree the maintenance of the colleges since their inception, uh, which has been very satisfying. And, and one of the things that I, I think several decisions have been made about the college system that really make it uh, an improvement over what we did at Duke. Uh, and one is the involvement of more faculty in each of the colleges, I think is a, is a real uh, improvement. I think it really helps for the students to have several faculty rather than only one knowing them well and to have a mixture of clinicians and scientists in each of the colleges I think is, is I think a superb idea. And then I think also the, the idea of having the students remain affiliated with the college throughout their four years and, there, and for there to be inter-class uh, nurturing and mentoring from student to student I think is a, is a feature of the colleges that uh, will represent uh, uh, a real improvement over what we did at Duke and uh, will result in a big impact on the students themselves. So part of what you're going to see now are the people whose legacy we want to emulate and the inspiration that we want to provide to our students. Professor Sia actually is a master clinician, a diagnostician and a wonderful teacher and he, uh, he's passed away now. Uh, he worked out of Singapore General Hospital and we thought that uh, many of the qualities that he had uh, would be something the students would uh, respect and hope to emulate, hence the choice. Prof. Arthur Gordon Ransom is a very inspiring figure in the Singapore General Hospital campus. So one of the very interesting stories was that uh, he once uh, was conducting a tutorial and he came to a patient who was very sick and very ill. And uh, I think he must have made the diagnosis very quickly, but then he wanted the students to remember that lesson very well. So uh, that man was very sick, uh, semi-conscious and trembling and perspiring. So he told one of the students, I think it was my, my teacher prof at that time, he said, um, boy, come here, come. He used to refer to them in a very jovial way as boy, you know, uh, but in a very endearing way. So boy, go to my office, go to a certain cupboard and take out this, uh, this, this bottle of whiskey and come here. So he went and brought the whiskey back and then he poured out a glass of whiskey and said, give this to this, uh, this gentleman here. So, and I think the, the patient took a sip of the whiskey and uh, within a few minutes, start to wake up, the shake starts to go off. And then he told the class, this is alcohol withdrawal. And it's that kind of, that kind of flair in uh, thinking through how he wants to impress lessons on the students that make them remember this for the rest of their life. And it's, it's, it's this sense of, uh, I think that's the flair of being a very, very good teacher. That uh, by planning a lesson and impressing, impressing it on the students, they make them remember very critical lessons for their life. I think the best way to describe uh, Eugene Stead and his uh, zeal for students and learning is just in terms of stories that happened to me. Uh, my first meeting with him was in the early 60s. I was a student, engineering student of 21. He walked into my office and said, hi, I'm Eugene Stead. Who are you and what are you doing? It's the first time I really discovered uh, his uh, curiosity and his ability to uh, really cut to the core of issues and not just sit behind his desk, but he was always wandering around the Department of Medicine to uh, see what people were up to. The second story has to do with, he had invited a number of practicing clinicians to come to Duke for a, a three-day conference on, on clinical problems. Very few people came, and instead of being discouraged, he scratched his head and said, 
they couldn't come because they were too busy. They were busy physicians, they had uh, lots of full schedules. So he said the way to do this is to build an assistant for a physician. That was the birth of the Physician's Assistant Program, which is now all over the world. The last story really has to do with his love of neurobiology and behavior. He understood very early on that repetition was the first law of learning. He also realized that if he did not reuse the information he learned, he forgot it. So he really pushed people to just learn that it was necessary to get the day's work done and not that that you had to pass half for passing examinations simply because you were going to forget it. When the internet came around in the early 90s and search engines began to appear, uh, we were talking one day and he immediately realized Google and the internet were his new memory and he would depend on Google and the internet to be his short-term memory to avoid having to learn things he was sure to forget. So if you now fast forward a few years to Duke NUS, Duke NUS, which is sort of internet centric, really reflects the educational and learning vision that Gene Stead brought to us over the last 40 or 45 years in terms of my experience. And basically he was all for restoring the joy of learning and that's what we're all about here, restoring the joy of learning. Our college itself is named after Dr. Benjamin Shears and uh, he was the second president of uh, Singapore and one of the mottos of our college is igniting the pioneer spirit and I think uh, Dr. Shears as well as the other people whom colleges are named after have uh, uh, all been pioneers in their different in their respective uh, ways. Uh, Dr. Shears was uh, the first Asian um, medical graduate from a Singaporean school. He uh, entered uh, Edward VII uh, Medical School in Singapore uh, and then went to uh, Britain and then came back and eventually became the first Asian professor here in uh, Singapore. Uh, after uh, uh, serving as a professor he later became Chancellor of NUS and then after that he became uh, President of uh, Singapore. I think his life exemplifies many many different ways of service uh, to uh, the community, first as a uh, physician, uh, then as a teacher, and then as a uh, educational leader, and then ultimately as uh, a political leader to a young country. Uh, his life really demonstrated uh, service uh, and care to many people, and I think those are the, some of the qualities, as well as his ability to not let barriers uh, impede him and to truly pioneer a path so that others can follow. I think all those things are very important for our, ourselves as faculty and for students to emulate. But I guess what really sets the college system apart is the fact that um, we have set time every week in our timetable um, to meet up with our college masters and um, our classmates. You know, to just spend time um, over a nice lunch and um, to interact with them and build rapport. The amount of expertise and the knowledge our college masters have significantly helped us decide in terms of the type of profession we want to get, get into, the specialization. They also help us with research, trying right. to uh, direct us in uh, what we're interested in. Uh, and they're also just there for moral support more than anything. Right. So they're kind of like your parents at school. So like they kind of like want to be there for you. Uh, advocate for you and make sure that everything is going okay with you, you know, help you out all the time. And Especially for uh, students who are international and don't have yeah. family members here, so they are the alternative family, I guess, in Singapore. Right, and yeah, they are someone that you actually know for sure that who is like, in the system and who actually really wants to like, get you through the system smoothly. We have uh, mentors in different fields which give us different perspective of different specialties like we are we have one college masters in endocrinology another was in oncology and we have a researcher so it gives us a broad uh, field of expertise in order to uh, get um, lessons as well as uh, advice on. I think what's really unique about the college system is the fact that our college masters are so invested in each and every one of us um, not only do they you know serve as our surrogate parents but um, they actually track our progress in school really closely to make sure that we're all doing fine in school, to make sure that you know, um, 
we are balancing both our work and uh, our outside life um, well. And we have chosen to name all our four colleges after very, very special physicians, um, both back here in Singapore and back in Duke. And um, all of them were very illustrious figures, both in medicine and um, as well as in other areas. And I guess they, each and every one of them gives um, each of the four colleges a very unique identity. And um, they really serve as inspiration when it comes to um, us looking in the future as to what we want to do, what kind of physicians we want to be, and um, how we conduct ourselves daily. I hope in these video segments you've gotten a real feel for what we're trying to accomplish together in creating and building our colleges. So the college is not only a, a key aspect of helping build and grow our students while they're here, uh, it's also a, a, a key part of launching our students and their careers for the future. So thank you for taking this time together to learn more about what we're about. Uh, and I hope that in 100 years or in 300 years, there is a, an opportunity to see where these colleges have gotten to uh, and what a contribution they've made, not only to medical education for our students here in Singapore, but contributions that our physicians make to the medical community globally.